markets continue to power on higher and higher, both the Aussie and the US are still moving. The question is where to invest money, sectors are going to move, and should we be buying shares or lightening the load? The man who's guiding us through is answering all of these questions on a weekly basis for himself, for his clients, and for us here on YouTube, we're very grateful for, is Gary Glover from Novus Capital. Good morning, Gary. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, Chris. So, excuse my voice. I'm recovering from a cold, but we'll try our best. The good thing is that uh, you're the main man with all the, <laughs> all the ideas and insights. So when you're looking at the markets at the moment, is there any update on how you've been looking at the US indices or it's still just powering ahead and that is what it is? Yeah, look, there's a little bit of that there, but look, we're just we're kind of in the, I think, the 15 weeks there and we're up over sort of 25% of the NASDAQ and 20% of the other indices there. That was sort of getting up into the, you know, the high-end movement there. Like you're probably only talking about maybe five or six moves sort of like that. So... The fact that we're now up close to 29 or up almost basically 30 percent, 18 weeks for the NASDAQ, 25 percent for the SP, and those 18 weeks. So you're kind of getting into rare, rare air here, you know. So just kind of getting into the longer sort of type of moves here with, without a pause here. So to me, we've sort of got high risk here um, of, of some sort of pause or consolidation here at least here. So um, yeah, so I know the momentum is obviously still. Still on the up here, moving higher, so they definitely sort of not can always go higher than you think. But in, in terms of moves historically, uh, percentage over you know short period of time here, that this is you know, getting to the really really pointy end here, you know, kind of exceeding you know, most moves generally. Um, so yeah, you know, I just think there's some risk here. There's a there's a few sort of um, big expansions as well. So just looking at uh, you know, squaring of ranges and looking at sort of fib rate as well that have sort of got some resistance here right right here. Um, also now it's sort of uh, look at our sort of seasonal. Um, I think Larry Williams put a, a, a nice sort of se- seasonal chart at the sort of start of this year, which the market has sort of followed quite nicely. But that that does call for a little bit of a pullback from late Feb into late March is kind of this you know, seasonal uh, week window. Um so I just, just feel like it's pretty high risk here at the moment here having you know, seen this extended here. So uh, I just think you've got to be ultra cautious here, particularly the US market. So that's the US indices definitely extending on that lead that you're talking about and, well, yeah. 18 weights, 25 and 30, almost 30%. If you're going to, you're going to quantify it there, uh, Chris, as well, I mean, we're probably looking at, well, you know, the, just over two years of average returns here in a quarter so that you know, so you just got to put that in context as well. So that that's that should tell you a little bit about how hot the market is. So just when we look back over the average markets, whether you go decade, two, three, four decades, it will change. But when you how far you cast in the net, it's still about an average of two years worth of returns condensed into the last three months, which is an eye watering value. If we put it another way, if we were to continue on this pace. For the whole of the year, how long would that equate to normally over market time frames? If you it's quarter, so that's four times. So that's like eight years worth of returns condensed into one year. Is that? I yeah, maybe if we look, continued on this path. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, you, look, you do get big moves like that October midterm year. That's the sort of bottom of the four year cycle, and then the, the fifteen months that come out of that is definitely the, the best fifteen months of the four year cycle. So. You know, we're we've probably just extended that a little bit longer here. Um, we've sort of moved just just beyond that. So, so, so we are in the sort of you know that that is the sweet the sweetest spot of the four year cycle. Um, but yeah, we are we are now getting into that sort of the pointy end of of big gains of a short period of time here, uh, and that's just the last drive too. That's not putting the whole drive into context. That's just looking at since October last year. Yeah, so just. That sort of move there is a pretty, you know, just so just looking for a sort of positive. Just we I mean, can have bigger gains over a long period of time there, but over a short period of time without without really a pause in there, um, you know, you, it's more natural to see, you know, some sort of corrective process there, some sort of pause. Okay, well, if we change focus to the Aussie, and then we'll come back into looking at the um, the gold and a few other places. The Aussie, we're still toying with that. You've mentioned how this is kind of 
resistance zone. It's fairly standard or common for the Aussie markets to sort of struggle around here. You'd mentioned this consolidation at the start of last week. It broke out to the high, closed at highs, but then had these lower weeks where we were still kind of maintaining up in the high or a consolidation under the recent high. How's that? How are you looking at that now on the Aussie? Yeah, it looks, looks a little bit different. Obviously, we've sort of now we've had that little breakout to a near high. We've had a little bit of a consolidation and another push there. So, uh, yeah, so but I think uh, normally when you sort of do break to new highs, I think at least sort of like a five week run would probably be the minimum, Chris. There, I think someone like the Nikkei we showed previously had the five weeks, went, went sort of, you know, broke out and was probably more aggressive. Um, then it sort of came back, retested the high over the next sort of like 12 to 18 weeks. And then then it sort of kicked on to new highs again. So that's kind of more normal. Um, but yeah, our market there is sort of, it's, if you look at the sort of setup here over the last um, two months there, it's probably more of like a rising wedge in there as well. Um, look at that little, you know, sort of tightening pattern there. So if you look at little rising wedges in our market there, normally they're sort of they're kind of negative sort of setups there. So, you know, um, it, it, it even... You do see them occasionally in sort of strong markets. They'll sort of rise up. They'll they'll have that pullback, and then then go again. So, but they they can be a little bit of a negative sort of setup as well here. So, look, it still looks you know still looks pretty robust. Probably looks more robust than some of the other ones looking really extended here. But again, when you haven't had the strongest market there, what are we sort of fifteen percent up here or something? And, you know, versus the Nasdaq, which is up sort of close to thirty. So, um, yeah, but. Yeah, I mean, I look, you know, I guess yeah, I'm tough to find too much value out of the top 50, even though it's sort of some of the uh, BHP and Rio sort of always give full back here. But the, the banks here, geez, you know, for a sector that's got no earnings growth in the next couple of years, they're, they're trading on some amazing multiples. I just don't get that. Um, so Good marketing team. Whether that's it, that's sort of maybe index driven, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely, you know, no value there. And a lot of those sort of stocks for me, well, uh, unless there's something about to change here for banks that all suddenly their earnings are going to you know, shift and grow a lot faster than they have in the last few years or forecast to grow in the next couple of years. I can't see anybody there. But most of broker valuations are sitting a lot lower here. So um, maybe it's a safety there. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, it's definitely. So just, yeah, I just feel like maybe, you know, Definitely not as bearish as the US market there, as in, as, as extended there. But, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to sort of see it man back a little bit there. So but when, you, when you're looking beyond the banks and the other ones, the heavyweights in our market, but somewhat near the high end of their valuation history, you've got the spot gold chart in this week's report. So we'll find the shares you've picked out, but can you just explain what's happening with the gold chart and why this is of interest right now yes and so what we do on a sort of friday chris obviously we look at our yeah, relative strands what sort of stocks are holding up the best here so you can see here that gold has been a sort of pull back here recently so you know for about what seven or eight weeks but it's pulled back at a tight and it's just really stayed nice and high nice and tight just under the old high so it's sort of struggling to go down now uh, we know sort of when we see sort of stocks that do that that are just sort of congesting under the old high and enough, they often break out there. If you look at some of the biggest move, movers we've seen coming out of reporting season here, we've seen a lot of those sort of stronger stocks stay high in the range and just under the high and then break out through. So, you know, this is a stock here. This is exactly the type of thing we want to be looking at there. So I just think it looks really encouraging there. Like, you know, so the silver is pretty similar as well. Um, so just this looks really robust there. So we're sort of seeing how that tight range is there, just a little bit of strength there late last week. But wow, which which gold stocks are actually holding up the best here? And um, is how this looks like it's ready to sort of you know kick on through and break to new highs here. So that may well be the case. You went through it in a bit of detail on Friday, but this is more of a condensed list, and these are the, this is the report you're sending out to your clients. So you've got Capital Metals in here, CMM. Uh, will be a good segue to talk about what this pattern is and uh, why why it's caught your eye. Yeah, so it's sort of a similar story there. So, I mean, you know, like a lot of the gold sort of sector has retreated, you know, and, and had a fairly decent pullback there. But look, that, that's the same. That has stayed so tight in the range there. 
And it's just got, you know, a series of high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low. So it's shown very little weakness um, over the last, you know, um, quarter or two. It's basically just gone sideways here. So, um, you know, that, that stock is showing, you know, so, you know, relative strength versus sector. I, I, you know, go as far as to say it's probably the, the strongest. It's the NVIDIA of the gold sector. Um, you know, really, really, really strong here. Just holding up, you know, um, amazingly firm, just showing very little weakness at all. And no surprise to sort of see that stock being sort of punching through the last few days there. So that, you know, that looks really, really robust. And to put that comment in context, on Friday, you went into great detail of the NVIDIA chart and you unpacked a lot of the opportunities and relative strength. So anyone who wants more context on that, they can check out the Friday video. The other one in the space, in the report, the gold space is Perseus Mining, PRU as a ticker, and you've got the daily chart this time. So for those comparing this weekly chart and the congestion, you've got a bit of congestion happening over here. Now, can't help but see the chart. You've got some lower highs, lower highs, uh, and then sort of an overhead resistance happening here. Yeah. This is going from sort of November, late November through to March. Over the same period, it's kind of what's highlighted here on the chart. Clearly, as you said, CMM's held up relatively well compared to its peers. What's what's happening here on this chart that makes it um, into this week's report? Yeah, I was trying again. I was trying to look for stocks that were sort of showing some sort of relative strength there, Chris. So either you know, like breaking to a new swing high, or you know, kind of breaking a sort of a downtrend there. So BRU was sort of one there that sort of was kind of showing the, the, the appearance of like a big inverse head and shoulder pattern on the sort of the weekly setup. But then we just saw that, you know, we've just broken above a swing high there, like a little B wave. And if I look at the overhead sort of resistance sort of trend line, we've just broken above that too on Friday there. So I thought that looked really interesting on Friday. It was sort of showing a little bit of, um, you know, relative strength. So, you know, I just thought, yeah, that, that looked probably, you know, again, one of the stronger looking names there over the last couple of weeks there. So most of the sort of stocks were probably trading down into sort of Thursday, Friday last week. It was, you know, Perseus had already started to trade up here and was looking pretty strong. Okay, so there's another one in the gold space looking strong relatively, especially in the last couple of trading sessions. Northern Star, bigger name, more well-known across the market, seems to be at the other end of the chart. We're back on the daily. So the October lows, it's come out of that has had sort of drives down. Quite often you talk about impulsive moves and corrective declines. These seem uh, a bit steeper. So what's the relative performance that you're seeing here that's catching your eye with all the start? Yeah, so again, sort of kind of like a little bit vcp ish Chris, in a way. That, that obviously the first correction is a larger one. But the second one sort of tighter um, and then starting to break up as well. So we we do have a zero one two three pattern in there as well on the on that sort of uh, power frame. I, I like them to be sort of normally closer there, but we do have a series of high, you know, sort of you know, consecutive sort of high lows building in there. Just like the fact that that last correction sort of stayed tighter, and then again the overhead there. Once we've just sort of broken out there on Friday, so I thought, well, that looks looks quite good as well. So again, that stock was showing relative strength versus sector there. So when I was looking late last week, I thought those those three look kind of the three strongest names to me um, um, throughout the sector there, sort of holding up, you know, pretty pretty firm there. All the stars a bit of a perennial favourite too in the market. Um, so and and you know, it's always a bit of a leader. We saw you know some pretty good volume. So so we just come in there that you know the day before that. So yeah, I just like to look at this there. I thought, you know, that you know breaking out that little uh, consolidation there, getting you know, the little B away break here, that's um, you know, just a good sign here that we might be sort of um gonna be up here. So I think it's already gone to a new high within a couple of days, Chris. So um yeah, so um, it's funny how this relative strength concept uh, keeps sort of uh, you know showing its hand. That's what we, you know, we we want to be looking for those sort of those sort of stronger names there really one um, you know in, in each sector there. Oh, we definitely yeah we definitely want to be working with those stronger names, and um, that that movement well that's that's great from Northern Star. If we move through, we got EBO so EBOS Group slightly different um, chart here. Definitely nice consolidation. You were talking about BCP before. 
yeah, yeah, maybe not, but it's that compressing and then this channel, this this real compression here in contrast to the volatility that we had back in November, December. How are you finding this as an opportunity? Yes, I mean, the, the price action sort of tightening up there. You've got a series of sort of high lows. So you sort of got that sort of ascending triangle sort of uh, appearance there. Um, the key there is just the high lows sort of building there. We've sort of still got our top there, which is sort of, um, you know, sort of probably got a seller there, which has sort of kept the lid on the stock here. Eventually, one thing will either happen is that the, 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 the seller will be, you know, will, will get complete and the stock will be able to permeate and, and break out above there. Or, or the seller gets more aggressive and then uh, and then, it, then it breaks the swing lower and then moves down here. So, but price action is sort of tightening up here. Um, I thought there a couple on the th Thursday we might have closed at a bit of a short term high there, but it hasn't gone on with that. But been been pretty light on the pullbacks there. So to me, it looks sort of more favourable than negative. Just sort of seeing a bit more volume on the up days, but still, um, still want to sort of see a break out there, but. Um, yeah, probably more interesting thing is that it has reported there and most of the um, broker reports were upgraded as a result of that report there. So that that's a sort of small, you know, small positive kind of fundamentally for the stock there. So um, that does bode well for a break on the upside there, but probably going to see it first. We want to see the break here just because just the market is pretty extended here. So, um, yeah, so as much as it is a green light environment still, um, definitely want to see a bit of break above here. And just for context, when you're talking about these charts and the days on them, you're doing this record on the weekend. You send it to your clients on the full of market open on Monday. We're talking about it earlier Tuesday or Tuesday morning. So if you're checking these charts as after the report's aired, that'll be the slight discrepancies. But uh, that's why Gary's sort of talking about these breakout points and different levels. Next one on the list, KAR, Karoon Energy, different space, still in commodities in that sense. What's happening here? We've got sort of, looks like it's attempting to get higher, but it um, hasn't quite got there. So different space, clearly not gold. What's Korean Energy doing for you? Yeah, so just, I like that sort of washout low there, kind of exhausted type of low, big volume at that level as well. So that's a fairly decent decline there. So to come back to a bit of a key level on the weekly chart, we sort of the good, trying the daily here just because there's a bit more detail there. What we're trying to look for is, is a bit of a break above that sort of swing high. So we've still got a few lower highs there. There was a break above there uh, on Monday, Chris. We did go, I think the stock got to uh, 204. Has had a bit of a throwback here today, but they can do that, can can go break and add a little throwback. But um, yeah, just want to watch this one closely here. I, just, I, I like the weekly low there. Some good volume sort of come in there. Just might sort of start building there, and then you know breaking above that sort of B wave there is first sign of sort of strength there. So I've seen the early strength there. I think you can get a throwback, um, but um, yeah, I, I do do like to look at this there. Just might just might need to build a bit more. Um, but it does look pretty constructive. Right. So moving on from Parade to Lot Rune to Linus LYC Linus Rare Earths. You had talked about rare earths uh, a couple of weeks ago as long as lithium companies. What's this company has sort of slipped on the weekly chart as we started 2024 and then seemed to slow down where it had had support three times before, but it did undercut it. However, yeah. in that undercutting, it seems like it slowed down and had a bit of a compression coil. How do you read what's happening there? It kind of reminds me a little bit of mineral resources there maybe a month ago, actually, sort of uh, similar sort of comeback, slightly lower, um, sort of broke to sort of slight new lows there and then kind of recovered and then kind of congested a bit longer and then eventually it sort of broke up. Um, but, yeah, just sort of kind of seeing some big volumes down there, so sort of signs of accumulation taking place there. Gone to a new low and really hasn't sort of followed through. So I've been building sort of here. Um, does need to show a little bit more strength there. Um, Kind of one stock I'd love to see, like a zero, one, two, three on the daily, Chris, just set up a few higher lows in there. Um, yeah, I might just do a little bit of building here, but uh, I think this one's sort of constructed there. I just really like the volume profile here over the last week or two. Um, does look like there's some accumulation taking place there. So we'll just need to make sure it holds the low here, but uh, does look pretty constructive there. You've seen a big move in some of those sort of 
um, you know, lithium sort of stocks already. So um, some of the other sort of um, diversified miners, which have probably been in some of the metals that have been underperforming, started to turn up and have kind of really um, bounced here sort of sharply there. So that, that's a good sign for Linus there um, as well. So definitely watching this one pretty close. Many of the other ones sort of I might probably feature next week is S32 has really come back quite deep as well. Um, that's sort of just starting to show so signs of building as well, a bit like Linus here as well. So um, definitely a couple of sort of stocks to keep an eye on. We've seen IGO sort of kick up out of its low there. So just, you know, just good signs there that some of those stocks are sort of starting to build here. Um, so, yeah, some opportunities there, I think. Well, uh, last one on the opportunity list, Woolworths, going to the large end of the scale, big Australian oligopic, oligopic uh, grocer. Consumer staples, this range, 43, 32, 33, we've come back a fair way, we've made our way down lower, and then where it seems like we've rallied, and then at this, almost the same kind of time it took us to rally up there, we seem to be coming back and testing, albeit with reporting season, pushing it back down to retest this low almost. And then you have a highlighted zone here. So do I dare ask what that highlighted zone is, uh, is saying there, Gary? Well, it's gone sort of from 40.50 down to 32.50 here almost. So that's that's like an $8 move for Woolies. That's, that's a 20% decline here in you know, relatively short period of time. That's a big move for big sort of you know heavyweight sort of stock there. Um, so I looked technically at this on the weekly there sort of a while back, and that was sort of around the 50% decline, if I'm not mistaken there, I think, on the on the Woolies. So I thought, oh, yeah, that, that's, that's the weekly range there. You know, going back the last sort of uh, probably 10 years there. So that that's probably the biggest move that I can see coming back to there. But considering how strong this tape is, Chris, how strong the market is, and we've seen a lot of stocks come back to new lows and then not follow through and bounce off them. So um, more than likely here, I think around 32.50, we might see a bit of support here for waters. That's, that's a massive move for this stock here. Um, you know, I just think we might see a bounce here, actually. I th originally, I thought maybe it comes back here, just sort of, you know, thinking worst-case scenario. I, I just doubt it can come back that deep, back to 30, 50. You know, that, that would be, you know... Um, I mean, Coles has actually had a pretty nice bounce here in the last couple of weeks there, just, just having a CEO who's sort of saying the right things. Um, and, um, yeah, so I just, you know, just think there's probably an opportunity here for Coles, you know. I mean, sort of like for Woolies there, I mean... You don't get a chance to sort of you know buy these blue chips there. I, I doubt too much is going to change here end of the day with, with Woolworths or Coles and stuff there, Chris, as well. I mean, as you know, as the Coles CEO basically is saying, what you know, two dollars forty five per hundred dollars, something is sort of the margin that they're making there. Um, you know, if they don't have any margin at all, then you know that you're not the you know one of the top five em employers in the country, and then you know, um, you know all these suppliers and stuff there. So you know they. Like these these companies have got to make some money, otherwise it doesn't work for everyone else. So, uh, so I think there's a lot of noise there at the moment, a lot of negativity for for Woolworths. But the reality is that between Coles and Woolies, they're what sixty five percent of the market share. Unless a new competitor comes in, and that that's that's going to take you know, that could take years, Chris. Um, so nothing nothing's going to change too quickly there, you know. So. Um, yeah, so I, I just think it's sort of business as usual here. There's an opportunity to probably buy fairly decent blue chip at a 20% discount to its, um, you know, to you know, to its sort of recent peak here. So um, more than likely, I think 32.50 is probably a good level for the stock here. Well, that's a good insight to share with us for uh, one of the larger ends of the market. So we often look at the opportunities, as you're saying, the momentum leaders. It's rare for it to be a blue chip. Sometimes it has been. But this is also an opportunity from a valuation perspective and something that you've got many years of looking at from the price to earnings and the history of how companies move in that sort of space and with that fundamental metric. So to that point, uh, we say thank you very much for the report, sharing with us these insights, the momentum leaders, and where you're looking at for the next opportunities and the ones that you're trading. Uh, any other sh um, gems that you want to share with us before we wrap for today, Gary? No, no, no sort of gems there, I guess. Um, yeah, as I say, I think, um, you know, um, probably just try and stay positive out there, Chris. That's the sort of thing there. Sort of, um, yeah, I was, I, was, I was listening to something. Um, uh, 
the crowd of market report there. What's what's his name? Um, Jason. Oh, got his name now. Thank you, but they can comment below. And, uh, yeah, but they, they, it's, it's he, he he put a piece out there recently where he um he 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 looked at this. He put the same data out and talked to bullish case, and he put the same data out and talked to bearish case on basically on the same data. The bearish story got about three or four times as many hits as as the positive as the positive there. So just going to show my people are out there looking for the negative for the for the you know for the worst case scenario and stuff there. So in trading, we got to stay positive. You know, you know. So if you, if you want to have positive results there, I uh, think you know go, go looking for the positive sort of you know, in markets there. So too many are looking for the negative. Um, you know, just look at the news in the world there. We're, we're drawn to all the, you know, uh, the worst articles, the the outliers, the, the most negative, um, you know, probably probably the most unlikely um, scenario stuff. <laughs> um, but, you know, we're, we're drawn to negative news, I guess, out there. So I think as traders there, let's you know, try and stay more positive and be drawn to, you know, the positivity there. I think your, uh, I think your results might improve there if you're, if you're, if you're staying more on the positive side of life here. Yeah. Well, that's it. The optimist, Gary Glover, and also the trader and quite successful trader. Thank you, Gary Glover, and we'll see you again on Friday. Thanks, Chris. Gary's mentioned a whole heap of strategies. On the right-hand side, there's a playlist, the Friday playlist, where he's talking about the top 30 or the 30-30 list. That's there on the right. And on the left is his Twitter handle or X, if you'd like to follow Gary there. <laughs>